Welcome to this week's installment, our Football Officials Video Training Series. This is the 2017 edition. We're studying the National Federation of High School Rules and five-man mechanics. This video is produced by the Arkansas Association of High School Officials. Visit our website at aahso.com. We're helping good officials get better. Technical assistance provided by Dax Hill, Greg Dowd, and George Demetrio. Video assistance provided by Chuck Scott. Produced by Kenny Sanders. Our executive in charge of production is Walt Coleman. I'm your host, Todd Allen. I know you want to be a better football official every week when you step on the field, and rules knowledge is the foundation of any good official. But the rule book can be overly technical, dry, and boring. It's just hard to stay focused. I personally recommend the Reading Study Guide for the NFHS Rules. Its easy reading style are both informative and fun. The general overviews, in-depth discussions, and quizzes give a great practical application of the rules. I've taught football officiating to hundreds of officials, but I never hesitate to recommend the Reading Study Guide to the NFHS Rules. When you're through learning, you're through. We start out this week's video with something kind of technical but really very simple and this is the battle between motion and shifts and understanding exactly what those are. I've said this before but it's, it bears repeating. To be a really good football official you have to be really good at rule two. Uh, and rule two in the National Federation of High Schools is where you find the definition. So I'm going to challenge you to find the definition of shifting in rule two. Read that and study that. Also understanding what motion is. A player cannot go into motion until all the players on team A have gotten set. After a shift, so the team leaves the huddle and comes to the line of scrimmage, everybody's got to get set before anybody goes into motion. Let's take a look at this play. The interior lineman does these uh, kind of one of these Dallas Cowboy old set moves. This slot receiver also tries to go in motion, but he actually moves at the same time the interior linemen are moving. So he's basically just shifting also. And then we have uh, the ball snapped and the quarterback dumps off to the uh, opposite side of the field here in a little bubble screen that goes for about 25 or 30 yards on what was obviously second and third down in a whole bunch. But we miss all of this action. The play looked funny. We, the casual observer knows that something was funny about this play. Line and scrimmage officials, you should recognize here that we've got an illegal shift because these players were moving at the same time. All of them were moving and not everyone got set before the ball was snapped. So a uh, simple foul right here that we should have picked up on the line of scrimmage. Referee, this happened right in front of you. The actual player in motion and your team, your players, your keys shifting actually occurred right in your field of vision. So I would expect you to pick this up. Give the line of scrimmage officials to throw. Give them a chance to throw. But if they didn't have this foul, I would expect you to have it. Umpire, the same thing with you here. You're looking right at your keys, right at the ball. You see the, all of this action happen. You should also pick up on this. Back judges, it's also good for you to understand the difference between motion and shifting. I want to take you back to the end of this play, though, and I want you to just look at the umpire's mechanics here. Because we've obviously got a loose ball here and some question about who has possession of it. You can see uh, the uh, referee stops the clock. No need to stop the clock here. The offensive team retained possession of the ball. There has not been a continuity of downs broken, so we're still going with the next down. So we should just hold the next down up. Back to my point with the umpire here. The umpire goes to the hash marks and stop as if there's an invisible fence there and his shot collar is about to go off. Umpires, you're the field general. I, I would expect to see you right in the middle of all of this action involving the loose ball because there's some mixed up of colors here. You don't need to hold this spot and this stopping at the hash marks is an old mechanic. We're not doing that anymore. Get out there in the action, break these players up, get the ball, then move back into the hash marks and spot the ball on either line of scrimmage official who's going to have that dead ball spot for you. That's just good solid mechanics if you do this this way. I love to see a umpire who's aggressive and takes control of the field. Keeps everybody on their toes, all the players acting well. So two good things in one play here. Motion versus uh, shifting and umpire mechanics. This next play involves blocking below the waist and the free blocking zone. Now it's important to know that the free blocking zone is an eight yard laterally and six yard longitudinally box that centers around the snap of the ball. So look at this tackle here on the right side. Line judge, this opens right, right up to you. Quarterback's in shotgun formation. So by philosophy, because this tackle is in a two point stance, he's prohibited from blocking low. And when I say by philosophy, I mean, the rule just doesn't say that. But the rule does say that when the ball leaves the zone, and this is too, it's impossible for us to be inconsistent with this foul if we all try to make that determination of where the ball is. So we've adopted this philosophy where two-point stance, quarterback shotgun formation, these linemen cannot block low. 
three or four point stance they have to block immediate there can be no delay if they block low with a delay it is a foul from a two point stance if you block low immediately it is a foul so watch this defensive uh, watch this offensive tackle here cuts this defensive lineman and this is an illegal block below the waist because the ball by philosophy is out of the zone blocking below the waist is prohibited we missed this foul All right let's transition right to this play and uh, notice the quarterbacks under center here and the linemen are down in a four-point stance look at this defensive lineman here at the top this is a player that i want you to watch in this play and we're not going to have a low block here i just wanted to point the differences out and give you a look at that uh, difference in the free blocking zone here the ball will stay in the pocket a little bit longer as the quarterback is under center this right tackle is going to cut this defender but the quarterback's going to throw a little fade on the outside here. And look at the contact now, the quarterback. Two problems with this action. First of all, the initial hit by the defensive end is high. Hits him in the face, in the helmet at least. This is a foul. We always want contact with the quarterback after throwing the ball. When, uh, when the defender comes in with hands to the face, it hits him in the head or hits him in the face. We always want that to be a foul. That's why it's important for the referee to have a good wide angle and good wide angle I say two to four yards off the line of scrimmage and I like the referee to be about five yards wide of the normal tight end position gives you a good look at the inside action on the quarterback because referee this is all you you've got to make this call that's the first action the second action is this violent spiking the quarterback to the ground it's not necessary it's obvious the ball has been thrown he's looking right at him he knows the ball is out Hitting him was fine if he hadn't hit him in the face. That was our first foul. And then if you miss that, you can get this action of us throwing the quarterback, the defender throwing the quarterback to the ground because this too is a foul. Either one of these, if we had gotten it, would have been a 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. This is roughing the quarterback. Next, we're going to talk about the mechanics on a free kick. But I want to talk about a couple of things first. The first thing is our video next week, coverage and keys and positioning and phases for free kicks. It's a real good piece of video. I hope you come back next week and check that out. The other thing I want to talk about is blocks in the back and uh, reintroduce you to a phrase called chase mode. And chase mode just simply means if you draw a line through the player's shoulders and uh, any approach from the rear is chase mode. When a potential blocker is in chase mode and there is any contact in the back, it is a foul for a block in the back. If he comes from either side and there's contact in the back, but also contact in the side, we do not want blocks in the back called because the player was not in chase mode. So pretty important to recognize a player in chase mode because that should be a huge red flag for a potential upcoming block in the back. Now, this play is a big swarm, lots of penetration right up the middle of the field. Referee does a great job of recognizing players that break through with no threat to them and gets his eyes up the field and picks up this block in the back right in the middle in the second wave. This is an excellent pickup and a fine piece of officiating as a correct call here by the referee for a block in the back. Let's transition now to another kick play. This is a scrimmage kick play. We know from our Rule 2 study that a scrimmage kick play is just a kick that is preceded by a snap. So we have a snap and then a kick, which we call a punt in layman's term. Scrimmage kick here on this play, and I want to focus on the line judge. National Federation of Mechanic uh, for line judges on this play. Ball is snapped as soon as the kicker receives the ball successfully. doesn't fumble the snap. Line judge, you release downfield. Work with the back judge, who's going to shave to the head linesman side of the field and be five yards deeper than the deepest receiver and got a 45 angles, uh, degree angle so he can look in. Now, we have seen some video where the back judge is short of the deepest receiver, but then to look at the ball, you've got to turn and look one way and all the action of the blocks coming down the field are another direction. So that's not a good mechanic. You want to be deeper than the deepest receiver and look through him up the field. Because the blocks, the threats, the first threat down your sideline, which is the head linesman's sideline, is going to be your key, line judge. You'll have the deepest threat coming in on the line judge's side of the field. That's why it's important that you release early. If you get too far behind these plays, you're out of position. makes it tough to make a call. I want to also talk a little bit more about identifying players in chase mode. I've developed this real quick graphic, and you got to work with me as the football player here is kneeling down looking up. But let's just imagine this guy is standing up running down the field, and he is going to be on the kicking team. So he has the potential to be blocked on this play. We lay this graphic over it, and I lighten the graphic up just a little bit so you can still see the player. Like I said, just imagine he's running down the field, facing in the direction that, that he is facing. So this, this line, this red line that we have through, identifies right through his shoulders. This is the 3 and 9 o'clock position on this clock. 
you see how with the clock going in it makes a little more sense okay players that approach him to block him from the three or the nine position if there's contact is initially on the side or if there's any contact on the side we don't want to foul for block in the back same goes through to this if we're talking about position 10 11 12 1 2 you know we know from all of these this is approaching a player from the front so we're not gonna have a block in the back but let's just talk about a player approaching from four five six seven or the eight o'clock position if a player is pr approaching a player that he's going to block an opponent he's going to block between four and eight then he is coming from chase mode now coming from chase mode and this is the critically important part when coming from chase mode any contact in the back for a block is a foul so this makes this a lot different so we go to the back and then we go to the side but we came from chase mode that is a foul now if we come from three nine or other, another position in the front and we have some contact on the side and then we have contact in the back that is not a block in the back because the player did not come from chase mode the opponent who's blocking does not come from chase mode really really important i hope looking at this graphic helps a little bit let's go back to the play let me rewind it just a bit here i want to go back to the the line judge's release you see his release is late he's coming down the field late so mechanically this play is already already beginning to break down and we know from previous discussions when we have a mechanical breakdown the likelihood of officiating here goes way up now let's look at these players from the receiving team let's look at these players one two three that we identify in this graphic okay none of these three players are coming from chase mode look at their opponents now we let the play go through here and there's some contact in the back but that's actually a member of the kicking team with some contact in the back of a receiving team player but that's not a block in the back certainly we don't want to have a, a foul on that play but we get a flag from the line judge here who reports a block in the back on the receiving team and I can just venture by looking at this and breaking this play down on video that he's out of position and he takes a guess but his guess is wrong which they always are you don't want to guess on a foul if you can't clearly identify a player coming from chase mode leave these blocks in the back alone because they're more times than not you're wrong and it's much better from an officiating standpoint if you miss a foul and have nothing than when you throw a flag and penalize a team who did nothing wrong that's much much worse case so we don't want to guess at any type of a foul if you're out of position you don't see a player coming from chase mode and you do identify something that looks like a block in the back leave it alone this is a mechanical breakdown and a play improperly officiated and an improper call for a block in the back I know that I'm running out of time here but uh, there's two more plays that I just absolutely have got to get to and there's a whole stack more that I'd love to get to but just out of time but um, let's look at this play here wide shot first and this is just a, a downfield on a skinny post route and uh, happens in front of the back judge here back judge great positioning over the shoulder working looking right at the keys this is great positioning and focused concentration here by the back judge unfortunately we do miss this is a targeting foul um, and the end zone shot is a better shot which kind of gives us the look of the back judge but uh, the uh, receiver attempts to catch the ball and then uh, is changing posture he's headed toward the ground the defender comes in and uh, targets him high takes aim at and then initiates contact with above the shoulders here at the head with his face mask of his helmet the face is up but he is leading with the head first contact made with the uh, face mask on the helmet of the defenseless receiver um, all the elements are in place here this is a perfect example of a targeting foul and one we would have supported an ejection on we do not get a flag down on this play but we are in good position to see it so I did think it would be good to look at um, this play here as far as the potential for a targeting foul might get some help on the outside on this but this is a tough play with five officials I do know that but I did want to show it all right, last one. Another DQ possible play here. We've got the quarterback with a straight drop back pass and a little bubble screen out here on the near side of the field. And the receiver goes up the field and a great open field tackle by the defender here as a receiver goes end over in this little front somersault. But the second defender comes in, lines up, targets the receiver on the ground, and launches. Forcible contact above the shoulders. This has every element for a disqualification, and we should have disqualified on this play. This is a foul, guys. We've got to be great dead ball officials, and getting a foul on this is not enough. This is one we have to have disqualification on. And I think everybody can support this, that these plays have to come out of the game to protect our student-athletes.
Thanks for sticking with me. That is it for the day. A little longer than I wanted to go, but some important plays. We saw some really good officiating this week uh, and some plays that I know we can do better on. And hopefully we will. And unfortunately, we don't get to show a lot of the really good officiating on this video because of the teaching opportunities that just aren't there. But we, we saw a couple of those this week uh, on the training video. So good job, guys. Keep working. For the coaches, really important that we get those uh, penalty playlists in huddle. All the fouls, that uh, all the plays where we throw flags on, please include those as a second playlist when you send your games in. Those are really, really helpful as we evaluate the games. Um, also, I'll be sending an email out with that and a link to our coaches' questions. Lots of great questions this week. I hope we got to all of them. Um, and for the officials, guys, just keep working hard. Some of the work that you've put in, we can tell some of you have really, really improved. And, uh, and that's just real good officiating. Some of you guys, we still got some work to do. But uh, keep up with the quizzes. Go over the play bulletins with your crew. Watch the training film together. Work and improve. Get better every play. Until next week the Arkansas Association of High School Officials. This is Todd Allen saying I hope to see you on the field real soon.